Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I have a few things laid out here. I've got some Tattered Angels chalkboard glimmer mist. I've got some acrylic paint. I have some Glam by Tattered Angels, as well as some high impact paint. And I have some papers, as well as some matte medium, rubber stamps, some napkins, some of the Canvas Corp brands, little butterfly and some stencils. And you're probably wondering, well, why are you showing me all of this? I am working on a project. This is a collaboration with 12 artists that we are to make what we call crazy pages. The idea is that we are to decorate some pages that we are going to swap with the other participants. And then those pages can be used in art journals or to make a page in a junk journal, whatever it is that they want. I'm starting with a couple of sheets of paper here that are watercolor paper that are 11 by 15 and it's 90 pound in weight. I decided that I wanted to start with something this big so that I could cut this into 12 pieces when I am done. And I've decided that I want to put this together with some washi tape on the back side just so I have one big sheet that I'm working on and I'm not having to pick up and put down another sheet. So I'm just taking some washi tape. This is some that I may not use all the time on the back side. Now that I've got this great big, and I know you can't see it in the picture, but it should be filling up the entire screen of white paper. What I'm going to do next is I've got some various things that I'm going to add to it. So let's start with some rubber stamping. I've got some Brutus Monroe Detail Ink, and I have a couple of stamps. This one is by, I think it's a stamp in the hand. Yeah, a stamp in the hand. It's just some script. This is a stamp abilities little scroll, and this is a little bingo card that's from Seven Gypsies. It's one of their old stamps, but they still have a few in their warehouse. And if you're interested in one of those, you can contact them about getting that. So I'm just going to use some Brutus Monroe Detail Ink, and I'm going to stamp all over this big giant piece of paper just to kind of give it something because it's white and I want to break up that white. So I've just stamped all over with the bingo card now I'm going to go in with this text and I'm not worried about it being perfect I'm just wanting to fill the space. And now I'm going to use the little swirl. Now I've got some Canvas Court Brands tissue that I just love this pattern. And I'm going to rip it up into little pieces and adhere it down with some matte medium. I'm just putting a little bit of matte medium on the parent sheet that I'm making and smearing it around with a foam brush and then adhering the tissue paper. Since I know I'm going to cut this up, I want to make sure that there's a good coating holding this paper in place. Otherwise, when I go to cut it apart, the paper will come up loose and that won't be good. I have a couple pages out of a dictionary, a really old dictionary, that I'm going to tear up and put on top as well. So 
So I've added stamping, I've added the tissue paper, I've added some dictionary pages on here. I think now I'm ready to start adding some color to this. I've got a stencil that I made on my Cricut and I think what I'm going to do is spray through that a little bit and see how this looks. I've got three colors of some Tattered Angels chalkboard spray. These were ones that were in Tuesday morning and I thought well I'll just show another way of using these in case you aren't able to uh, pick these up. Maybe you can get them at Tuesday morning. You can also order them directly from Canvas Court Brands. So I'm just going to spray through this stencil with these colors. And then since there's going to be color on top of the stencil, I'm grabbing a sheet of paper to help soak up any of that spray so I'm not wasting any of it. So there we are with part of it. I'm just going to continue to do this all over this piece of paper. Alright, so I've sprayed some chalk all over this a chalkboard paint or spray and I think I'm going to do is let this dry for a moment and then come back with my next layers of items. I have some Tattered Angels high impact paint and glam just a few colors that I thought would go and some acrylic paint and what I'm going to do is I've got a a food tray and an old key card. I'm going to pour these colors in here and then I'm going to use the technique of scraping over the top to add the color to the page. On the glam you want to make sure you shake it up really well because it does have glitter in it. So I've got blue high impact paint and copper. So I'm just going to dip my key card in here, mix it around, and just pick up some of this color. I'm going to let this dry and I'll be back. I picked up a few stencils. Some are from Tim Holtz. The striped ones from Brutus Monroe. I don't know which ones I'm going to use, but I thought what I would do is go in and put a little bit of white gesso on here. So I'm going to use the same card method and I've got just some white gesso, simple stuff. And I'll just dip my card in that gesso so it's loaded up and then I will go over the stencil. I'm using my heat tool to dry the gesso and other layers in between. Okay, so it may look like a hot mess at the moment, but we're not done yet. <laughs> I'm going to get another stencil and add some more layers here. This is Punchinella. This is what this is called. This is sequin waste. So whenever sequins are made, they're made on a long strip. And whenever that's done, they have this piece left over. And some of those sequin makers sell this piece. So if you ever see those, pick them up because they make great stencils. I'm going to add just some gesso here and there using the card to help tone down some of these colors for the next layers that I plan to put on. 
I've got some electric blue tattered angels and I want to spray some of this in a couple of areas and the first thing I'm going to do is find my water bottle well I couldn't find my water bottle but I have a watered down tattered angels that's got gold shimmer in it and what I'm doing is I'm spraying it with this lighter color so that when I spray this blue over it, I get some neat drips and effects. So I'm, I'm spraying a little bit and then I'm spraying the blue and then pushing it with the other color. So this will get some neat runs and drips on here. And then to help set this in place, I'm going to use my heat tool. Okay, so I've dried this a little bit, and I'm just examining it. And it's hard to probably tell on camera, but it has a neat copper undertone to it. And then the blues that have come in with pops of yellow. Of course, you've got to remember, I'm going to trim this down, so there's going to be little snippets. And you may be wondering, you know, you did all these layers. Well, each layer makes a difference because when you cut this out, I can see part of the bingo card here and I can see part of the dictionary page. So it's just a layering process. And what I love about mixed media and paper crafting is you can do whatever you want. There's no wrong way. If you like the way it looks, it's a good thing that you're doing it. And it's a great opportunity to play. I didn't know how this was going to for sure turn out. I had an idea, but you just keep playing. And so that's what I'm going to continue to do. I've got some other things I want to layer up on here. And we'll see how they're going to work. I've got a napkin here that I picked up. And I think what I'm going to do is tear it apart. And then we're going to adhere it down. This time I'm going to use some perfect paper adhesive and place it in places all over the canvas. I'm just going to start on one side and work my way across. All right, so I've got the napkin adhered, but I'm going to let this dry, and I'll come back and show you the next thing that I want to do. I've got some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist in Cranberry Zing, and I've shunk it up, and I'm going to attempt to loosely watercolor the other side of the flowers that are missing. It may not be a dark enough tattered angels. I may have to add some more colors, but that was kind of my idea. I thought, well, I'll play with this just a little bit and see if I couldn't basically watercolor in the petals that are missing from the napkin where I tore it apart. I'm kind of liking it, but I think I need an under color that's a little bit darker. So I'm gonna dry this and see how it looks, and I may come back with some acrylic paint. All right, I've picked up some acrylic paints. I've got a Folk Art Metallic Paint Rose Shimmer, an Anita's all-purpose craft paint in Royal Fuchsia, and then I've got some Craft Smart paint in Magenta. So I'm going to shake these up. I think I'm just going to make a little palette here and see if I can't play with these colors. I think I like that one. Little bit darker kind of a pearl that's pretty all right well I'm gonna try doing it with these uh, paints just kind of picking up a few colors and 
loosely watercoloring, painting the petals and see what happens. Okay, I think I've added enough of the pink acrylic paints. So I'm going to dry this just a little bit and then I'm going to come back with some yellow and the Tattered Angels again. I'm liking how this is looking. See how I've kind of filled in where the flowers are. I'm not a painter. I'm a player. And so you can do this too because I don't know how to paint. I just kind of filled in. I go to those paint classes because it's like paint by numbers. They tell you exactly where to put what and how to do it. <laughs> All right, so for the next part, I want to fill in where the yellow centers are on the flowers and make them a little brighter. So I'm going to go back to this yellow paint that I had out earlier. And I'm going to put just a little bit of this copper kind of next to it. And that will help darken that up a little bit. And it's since it's a glaze type paint, or I mean it's a glimmery paint, it will put a little glimmer in it as well. So I'm just going to find where the centers are of my flowers and... make them pretty. All right, so I've, I've put some over this side here. I think I'll put a little right there. See how taking a napkin and you can come up with a concept, stamping and whatnot. Okay, so I had a oopsie. I dropped some paint on my palette here, so I'm going to water down some of this yellow paint and fling it on my canvas, because I kind of like the look of the yellow. All right, I'm going to dry this, and I'm going to come back with the Tattered Angels in pink. Y'all don't know how much I'm in love with how this is looking so far. And I know it's hard to tell on camera, but it's really looking awesome. I'm loving the color and the texture in here. And I'm not done yet. I know there's some other things I want to do yet. So I'm kind of excited about it. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the Tattered Angels Cranberry Zing and paint around and add some glimmer. Oh, I forgot to shake it. Gotta shake it. So I'm just kind of, it's not much, but when it dries, it'll have a real pretty shimmer. And I'm being messy about it. I'm not, not being precise. And that napkin, it's kind of soaking it in. So there'll be darker areas. I'm running out of space here on my desk. All right, so I've got a nice little coat all over of the Tattered Angels, so I'm going to let this dry. i will use a heat tool, and then we'll move on. Okay, so I have dried the Tattered Angels on here, and because Tattered Angels can move whenever another liquid is applied to it, I'm going to seal these. So I want to make sure it's completely dry and then I'm going to seal this with a spray fixative. So I'll just take it outside and put this matte finish on there. I've sprayed it with the sealers and it won't run now. Um, hopefully 
somebody else is using it, they won't have any issues with it. And I've got a couple of pins there. I've got a pit fiber Castell pin and a Sharpie. And I want to see, I don't know if the, oh yeah, it'll, it'll do what I want. I wasn't sure if the Sharpie was what I was going to need or if I was going to need the sharper point or, but it looks like this little pit pin works. And I'm just going in and adding the outlines of the flowers. So as you can see, I just went around and scribbled around the flowers. And I think I have changed my mind about adding these butterflies. I think what I'm going to do, since this is a swap, is I'm going to send a random bug butterfly moth with the page. And then they can choose where to put it. So I'm going to take a couple of pictures of this and figure up the math of how I need to cut this into 12 pieces. And once I have cut that up, I will come back and show you the last step that I'm going to do to these pages. Well, it took me some time with my math skills that are very lacking. <laughs> and I was like, I could not figure out how to cut an 11 by 15 sheet of paper into six pieces. And then finally it was like, duh, five by five and a half. <laughs> so I cut them all up. And when I did, I fell so much in love with these. I will tell you what I've done. When I had the big pieces, I scanned those into my computer. Now that I've cut them up, I went in and I scanned each one of these into my computer. And the reason why I did that, for those that follow me, I make junk journals. And I have been wanting to make my own junk journal kit. And so I'm hoping that with some help from a friend of mine, I'll give more details later, that I'm going to turn these into a junk journal, digital junk journal kit. But I wanted to show you all the pages. I've decided I'm not going to do anything else. I was going to sew on these and add some more stuff, but I thought, no, I'm going to let them, as the other person, choose how the ending is for this piece. And then this is the piece I'm going to keep because I'm in love with it. It's the dragonflies. And when I scanned it in and then told my computer to print uh, fit to page, this is how, I'll turn it around so you can see, this is how it printed, and I love it. It's absolutely gorgeous. So you've got to witness my creating this page. I know it was a hot mess in the beginning, and you probably were just wondering, where are you going with those hideous colors? But hopefully now you can see what I've done. So check out my link description box for a link I'm thinking there's supposed to be a blog hop on YouTube. I know that we're supposed to name these crazy pages. So look for other videos that are the name of crazy pages and you will see lots of other creations much like mine. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a creative process. It was a playing process. And I just want you to be aware and understand that it's okay to sit and play and if something doesn't seem to be working out right you know in this case add some more paint to it if it's some other paper project put another piece of paper over it <clears throat> there's usually a way to fix what you might consider a boo-boo and really what you can should consider it is an opportunity to succeed and have beautiful pieces of art so thank you so much for watching today. If you haven't already, like this video, share it with your friends, use that comment box below to tell me what would you like to see if you were to make one, what colors would you have used possibly, or how would you like to use a journal kit like this. And check out the other crazy pages. Let's see, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I'm rambling, so I'm going to get off here. Y'all have a fabulous day. Thanks for watching. Bye.